Oh, may the peace of God continue to be here this morning as we sit together. It is a blessing and it is a real privilege to be able to be together this way. For many of us, it is strange, it is different, but we serve the same God today that we did a month ago, that we did six months ago, and we did a thousand years ago. Our God is still the same. And I'm so thankful for that, that our God does not change. And it was very good to hear the report from Pastor Milton. It, uh, I'll be very honest, it gives you a little bit of a longing to go back and go worship with them, especially for this morning as they meet together for the first time. You know, our, our hearts are, are still partially there because we know them and we, we know a lot of the things that they're facing, a lot of the struggles that they're facing. We also know a lot of the victories that they have and they've gone through. And it's, it's been a real blessing. Before we go into the message this morning, let's just stand, give us a little change of position. Let's stand and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we just want to say thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you that we're able to gather together this way as a small group of your children together again. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to be here in our midst. May you continue to shower your blessing upon us. Lord, be with those that, are, that can't be here, but that are listening, that are watching. Father, may you just continue to be with each one. May your word go forth in power and in might. We pray again that you would just lead us and direct us through this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, for our message this morning, as, as I was thinking throughout the week, as meditating and praying what the Lord wants us to bring, there's one thought that kept coming to my mind, and that was simply, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. So the title for this morning is The Faithfulness of Our God. The Faithfulness of Our God. And I found it interesting you know, I hadn't even given it a thought as I was meditating on it. And I began to look and began to think, okay, where have I preached a message on faithfulness? And I went back and I looked and I found some notes. And I found it interesting. I looked at the date and it is almost exactly a year ago that I preached a message on faithfulness. And it was also a time when we lived in Lecrete and we were just evacuated from town. We all had to leave, a time of crisis. And as I thought of that, I said, isn't that interesting? Today we are exactly two weeks short of a year. And again, my mind just went to the faithfulness of God. As I thought of all the things we've been through in the last number of months, all the changes, all the challenges, I say, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. So I don't want to, I'm not going to be sharing a lot of new things with you this morning. But I do want to share truth. And that is because we're going to take it out of the word of God. Because the word of God is true. The word of God doesn't change. And that's number one that we have to make sure that we understand. And we believe. The word of God is sure. It is steadfast. So turn with me for my first thoughts to Genesis 17. And I simply want to go through scripture and pull a few promises that God has made and see how he fulfilled those. So Genesis 17, and we have a, a number of scriptures that we want to look at this morning. Genesis 17, verse 15. And this is where God comes to Abraham and he makes him a promise. It's not the first promise, but this is one of the promises. And God says in verse 15, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall, be, shall her name be. Now notice what he says, And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be to her. You notice what God says there? He says, I will. 
How sure is that? How sure is that? Sometimes we say, I will, I, I, I will make sure this gets done. I will make sure we do this. And then we forget. How sure is that? But when God says, I will, that is as sure as if it happened already. That's how sure it is. Did it actually happen? Turn to Genesis 18, just one chapter over. In verse 9. He says it again, chapter 18, verse 9. And they said unto him, and we're breaking in again when Abraham had these visitors. And they said unto him, unto Abraham, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, and here it is again, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. I will return. I will give Sarah a son. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You know, this morning as we look around us and as we look at our own lives, and as I look into different of your faces this morning, I see different struggles. We all have different struggles. I see some pain. I see hurts. I see challenges. I see temptations that we all face. And yet we say, oh, but God doesn't want to take me through it. God's not going to see me through it. It's too hard. I can't bear this. But the angel told Abraham here, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard? There's nothing too hard for the Lord this morning. We need to make sure we understand that. If God can take a couple like Abraham and Sarah that are well stricken in years, Abraham being 99 years old, it tells us, and give them a son, what more can God do for you? What more can God do for you? Why? Why? Because he says, I will. I will. And we need to make sure that we understand that. And that we believe it. Because he will. He's, he hasn't failed. And we know, the, we know that he kept that. Let's keep on going. Genesis 21. Verses 1 to 3. And we, and we know these accounts. But I just want to wake it up in us. Again, that we see our God is faithful. He promised it. And here in Genesis 21, verse 1 to 3, we see the fulfillment of that. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham his son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. You see God's faithfulness? God did the impossible. Man said, this is never going to work. This is never going to work. But God had said, I will, and therefore he did it. <laughs> you see that? To me, it's just so precious to again see. God is faithful. God will keep us. Genesis 26. I said, I have a lot of, a lot of references that I want to look at just to verify in our minds that we have a faithful God. And if we would go back to Genesis 15, in verse 5, is where he makes this promise, and didn't take time to go there, but God had promised Abraham, he said, I'm going to give you a son, and I'm going to make his name great. And again, Abraham couldn't see it. He said, but I don't even have a son. But God said, I'm going to give him to you, plus I'm going to make his name great. So in Genesis 26, we, have, we see what happens there. Genesis 26, verse 12, says this. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession 
of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. You see that? God again kept his promise. (laughs) What a faithful God. What a faithful God. You know, God promises us things today as well. Is God going to keep it? Absolutely he will. Absolutely he will. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's just turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy 7, verse 7. And the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any people, but ye were the fairest of all, but ye were the fewest of all people. And here we see again that God is fulfilling the promise that he made to the children of Israel. And so let's see what he promises them, what, what he does. Verse 8, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out, of the mighty, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now therefore know that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. And and he just keeps on going. He says, you know, this is what I will do. Why? Because I feel like it? Because this is something that I just want to do? No. He says, because I promised this to your fathers, to the children of Israel. This is why I'm going to do it. He says, I will keep you, I will lead you, I will continue to guide you, I will take care of your enemies. Did he? Yes, amen, he did. Why? Because he made that promise to Abraham. He said, if they will be followers of me, if they will be faithful to me, if they will trust me, they will walk with me, then I'm going to do these things for them. And he did. God didn't forget. How many generations had gone in between? I didn't check it but it's many generations in between. And yet God said, because I told Abraham back here, I will do this for you now. Again, I'm just encouraged by that thought. God has spoken, God has promised something, he will perform it, he will keep it. What a blessing, what a great God that we have. Now we have to remember in in Deuteronomy here, he has all these promises that he will do. And this is a passage that many, many people today will take out of context and say, well, if we trust God, God will do all these things for us. That's not what God promised here. God promised this to the children of Israel. One one thing we have to remember is many of the promises that God makes in the Old Testament, when we take the word of God and we read the Old Testament, a lot of the promises that he made were made to the children of Israel. We cannot take all those promises and say, well, they're for us today. Yes, they apply, but let's make sure that we do not take them out of context. If they're for the children of Israel, they were there. Right? And we need need to remember that. We need to take the word of God in its entirety. Not just what we want, pick and pull the promises that we want. Let's keep on looking at the promises of God. 1 Kings chapter 8. I know we're in the Old Testament. I know we keep looking at promises of the Old Testament, but we have to remember that God has spoken from the beginning of time. God has made promises. God has made covenants, and God has kept them. That's what I want us to understand this morning. In 1 Kings 8, verse 54, I'm I'm gonna just take time to read read these verses. Chapter 8, verse 54 says this. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of, end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling from his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. 
And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, now let's remember, this is the blessing to the children of Israel, to the congregation. Verse 56, blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. See that again? According to all that he promised. God had kept his word. God had kept his part. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as a matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the thought that I want there is right there at the end, that we may know that there is no other God besides the Lord our God. Why? Because he has kept his word. There is no other God that has kept his word. Nothing else. It's only the word of God. It's only the true God of heaven that has kept his word. He hasn't changed. He has spoken it, and he has kept it. Again, I find it so encouraging. Psalm 36, verse 5. Psalm 36, verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. (laughs) See how great that is? See his great faithfulness? It goes so far beyond what you and I can even comprehend. So far beyond. Says he reaches all the way to the clouds. High, lofty, and lifted up. Psalm 89, just a few, few chapters over. Psalm 89, I'm just going to read the first nine verses. And again, listen to the faithfulness of God. Listen to the faithfulness of God. King David, the psalmist David here as he writes this. Psalm 89, verse 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. And I'm just going to stop there. Let me just ask you this. When is the last time that you talked to your children or to a family member about the faithfulness of God? When's the last time you sat down and you actually talked about the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God? Or have you simply just looked around you and said, oh, life is so terrible, life is so miserable, I'm going through this pain, I'm going through this hurt, and God was never fair, he should have never done this to me, and he should have never allowed this to me. Or can you say, I will talk about the faithfulness of God? Yes, there's pain, I'm not minimizing that. But I think many times we wallow in our pain because we fail to look up and say, God, you are still faithful. You are still almighty God. So again, I want to ask you, when's the last time you talked about the faithfulness of God? Or do you even see the faithfulness of God? Have you seen it? Did you see the faithfulness of God this morning? I've been blessed the last number of mornings. I've been waking up right around five o'clock. I don't know how many of you get up at five o'clock, but I happen to wake up, and I'm reminded the faithfulness of God. Why? Because over in the eastern sky, the sun is coming up. As I look out my window, I can see the sun coming up, just shining bright, and I say, God, you are again faithful. You've given us another day. Lord, you've given me life again. You've given me another opportunity. And that is simply just the faithfulness of God. That's just one area. And there's many, many that we can see if we just look. 
Let's keep on reading. Verse 2. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. Right? The very heavens. And we see that. I just talked about that. The sun coming up. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. Has God done that? Has God done that? What he just said here in verse 4? That he will make... How does he say that? I will establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Has God done that? Amen, he has. Why? Because God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. It comes from the seed of David. Verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee or is to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves are ever rise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab to pieces and he just keeps on going and going and going about the faithfulness of God. Let me ask you again, do you see the faithfulness of God around you? Have you experienced the faithfulness of God in your life? I'm thankful I have, and I am, and I believe we all are. But do we recognize it? Do we acknowledge it? Do we acknowledge it? And we could spend a lot of time, a lot more time there looking at all the good things, all the faithfulness that David mentions there. And I would encourage you to take time to read and meditate on Psalm 89 especially. And as you reflect on that, Look at the faithfulness of God for us today, for your life today. Let's go into the New Testament, John chapter 2. What is another promise? And again, we, we could spend all morning just looking at the promises of God, and, and I'm not going to take time to do that. I'm just pulling a few of them just to wake up, wake us up. And help us to realize the faithfulness of our God. John chapter 2, verse 19. Let's begin in verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto them, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? but he spoke of the temple of his body. Okay, here Jesus told the people around him, he said, you know what, you can destroy this temple, but it's going to rise in three days. And he makes it very clear, he's talking about his body, he's talking about his death and his resurrection. This morning, I don't think we even question his death and resurrection. But he made this promise to us. He made this promise to the children of Israel, to those that were around him, to all nations. Did he do it? Do we actually believe that he did it? You know, and I find it interesting that there is actually people today, there's different people today that will tell you that, oh, he was a good man. And, and we, know, we know there's a lot of these, these religions around. But they fail to understand that Jesus rose again and shed his blood for you us as individuals, each individual personally. And I think sometimes we fail to appreciate it enough. I fail to appreciate it enough, what Christ did for me. When I look at his promise, and I look at, look at these verses again, and I say, he actually did it. Not that you question it, but I think you understand. At least I find myself feeling that way. And he actually did it. Why? Because of his love. Because of his love. And I think that is so precious. That helps me to again place my trust in Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, because he is faithful. He does exactly that. Mark 14, verse 58. Mark 14, 58. And this is, again, 
where Jesus is in trial before his death. And this is what they were arguing about. This is what they were arguing about here in verse 58. This is the false witnesses in verse 57. There were false witnesses against him saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. You know, they remembered that. They were bearing false witness. They took one of his promises and they're trying to twist it around to make it say what they wanted it to say. But as we looked at there in John, he says he's talking about his body. But we know that Jesus, at his death, he rose again. John chapter 2. Go back to John. John chapter 2. Verse 22. And again, I'm simply just pulling these promises just to help us to understand that our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. John 2, verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, now what happens? He rose from the dead, and he says, then his disciples remember that he had said, un said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. This morning when you look at the faithfulness of God, can you take and look into scripture? You say, I believe it. I believe it because God said it. It's that simple. It's that simple. I had an old pastor years ago met a woman down in one of the southern states that he'd never seen before. He was actually in, the, in a post office. And he met her and she was wearing a, wearing a veiling. And he asked her, he said, ma'am, why do you wear that funny thing on your head? Why do you wear that funny thing? He knew what it was because they, they practice it. She looked at him and she said, well, sir, he said, the Bible says it, so I does it. Is that how we are this morning? The Bible says it, that's why we does it. The exact way she said it. Do we do it because it's in the, in the Bible? Do we take the word of God that seriously? If the word of God says it, we do it. Do we look at the promises of God? The word of God says these are the promises of God. Do we believe it? Or do we keep on questioning? Do we keep on questioning? Where are we at? Hebrews 13. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, verse 5. And again here, I just, I just want to pull one phrase out of this verse. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And I just simply want us to think about that phrase, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I know there's, there's a whole message in here in itself. And I don't want to pull this out of context. But the promise that I want us to see is God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This morning, if we place our trust in God, our life is of such that our conversation is without covetousness. Our whole walk of life is of such that we exemplify Jesus Christ. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? I find it encouraging. I find it encouraging, and yet I find it challenging for the fact that there's a condition that we need to continue walking with God. We need to continue living our life in such a way that we exemplify Christ. This morning, do you wonder sometimes what is God asking of us? As we look at, the, at his promises, we look around us all the things that are happening all the sickness, all the shutdown, the loss of work, all these things, how are we supposed to deal with this thing? Do you ever question that? I do. But then I'm reminded in, John, in James chapter 1. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to turn there. It's just one page over. James chapter 1. 
if we don't know how to deal with it, and this is not just this, but in life. James chapter 1, verse 5, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give us to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto you. This morning, if you have questions in your life, and you're wondering, is God really faithful? Is God really going to do that for me? Do you believe the Bible? We're back. We're, see, I've just made a circle. Do we really believe the scripture? Promise of God. He says, if you lack wisdom, just ask. Just ask. God wants to give us wisdom. You ever think of that? God wants to give us wisdom. God wants to give us understanding. Why don't we get it? Because we fail to ask. We are not availing ourselves of that promise that God has made. We say, oh, we believe the promises of God, but we sure don't ask. Do we really believe it? The Bible says it. Do we do it? Do we really do it? Matthew 6, 25. Matthew 6, 25. Again, this is the words, the words of God. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat and what ye shall drink, nor what ye shall wear, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather unto barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much worth? Are ye not much better than they? Is that he saying, don't worry about these things. Don't worry about it. I've been faithful. I've been faithful. I've been faithful from the beginning of time. I will be faithful to the, to the end of time and through all, all eternity. Why do we get so caught up in the things of today? That's a challenge that I ask myself. Why do I get so caught up? Yes, we need to do our part. I'm not saying we just sit back and let things go by. But how much time do we sit and worry about these things? Or are we willing to simply take the word of God and say, I believe it because it says it. I will trust him because he's been faithful. So therefore, I can trust it. I can believe it. Because he has kept his word through it all time. Are you thankful this morning that you have life? Are you thankful that you have a place that you call home? Are you thankful that you are still able to meet together this way, even though it's different? Are we thankful? God has said he will be faithful. He will be faithful. Turn to Acts chapter 1. We have looked at promises that God has kept in the past. I want to look at one promise that God has made that he has not yet fulfilled. He has not yet fulfilled this promise. But I know, I'm 100% convinced that God will keep this promise. God will keep it. Why? Because he's kept all the ones in the past. And he said he's not going to change. So I know he will, he will keep this one as well. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Let's go back. To, let, let's start at verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And this is where Jesus, with his disciples, went up to the mount. And this is Jesus' ascension. They received him out of his sight. Verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see the promise? He said, You've seen him go? He will come back. Our Lord will come back one day. He will again come back. Do you believe it? Amen. We need to. Why? Because he's been faithful. Our God is coming back. 
Have you talked about the promises of God? Are you talking about the promises of God? Or are you so caught up in all the negative things that are going around us today? And there's a lot. And it's easy to get caught up in those things. Maybe we have things in our life. But I want to encourage you this morning to look, to look at the one that has made the promise. Look at the one that has said, I will. And he did. Look at the one that says, I will return. And he will, because he's been faithful. Friends, this morning, our God will keep his word. He will. Place your trust in him. Place your trust in him. And I want to encourage you, as you go through today, as you go through the week, that you talk about his faithfulness. Share about his faithfulness to someone that you meet. Someone that you meet. Share his faithfulness because our God is good. Our God will keep his word. He always has and he always will. May God continue to bless you as you serve this faithful God. The one that has made it possible for us to gather together. The one that has not changed and will not change. What a place of security that is. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we again come to you this morning. Lord, we just want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for again preserving us. Thank you for being here with us. Lord, thank you for your word that has been preserved for us. That we can look back and we can see the promises that you made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to Solomon, to David, and to us. Father, and how you have kept those promises, how you will never fail. Lord, just thank you for that security. Lord, we pray that as we go throughout this week, that we would be able to place our trust in you because of your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, may you just continue to lead us and direct us and draw us closer to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.